All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Dirty Bird Nation Report, the unofficial official podcast of Falcons Twitter. It's your girl Lethal here. Yes, I'm going to be talking a little different, a little slow. I've been sick. I'm getting over whatever I got going on over here. It's not fun. That's why I'm not on camera. Um, and I did not let my fellow co-hosts know when I was recording, um, what I did, but I didn't tell them officially, um, and don't have them here because I can't talk. Like, I'm going to have to pause this recording a lot because I can't talk for a long time. Y'all won't know that it's paused. Um, you know, listening won't know it's paused. But I didn't want to interrupt their day and make the episode go much longer because I have to personally do a lot of pausing because I can't speak for X amount of time without stuff happening over here. So thank you for tuning in. Sorry the show came out longer. I'm trying to get it out on Monday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesdays. Um, However, you know, depending on my schedule, I may or may not be able to do that, but in this case, I was sick, so recording today, it'll be out today, Thursday, sorry it took so long, and last week I wanted to get out more videos, I did say I was going to post more videos, I apologize, I got sick, and I'm still in recovery from, from that sickness, so let's get into this show. Let's get the rest of the housekeeping out of the way really quick. All right, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are 60 people away from um, 200 subscribers. If we get 200 subscribers before Halloween, we'll get out give out a Falcon jersey. I know it's a task and a harder said than done, um, but you know, y'all share it. Make your friends subscribe. Mom subscribe. Make one on channel and just subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video, please. Likes will boost us. You know, as you can see, we're back. We've been consistent. I want to continue on the consistent train. Get out more videos during the week. Sickness sucks, but I am working on it. So please hit the subscribe button. Uh, It's somewhere, wherever you can find it. Subscribe and like the video. Let's get the good stuff out of the way. First of all, congratulations to Clay Campbell for a hundred career sacks that is huge 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 congratulations to you for that um defense obviously we don't need to talk about them they did pretty well could have did better personally i think they uh, weren't as good as the first five games the first games of the season so i think they did as good as those games however they did a good job to really get into uh we did lose unfortunately we did lose Jalen Hawkins on the defense hopefully this just picked it up if not I'm about to repeat myself hopefully we um unfortunately we did lose Jalen Hawkins on the defense which was a huge surprise he did get picked up by the Chargers I believe but we did lose him. Um, people are speculating. We are trying to make room for someone else um, to join the squad, you know, free some money up for it to pick up somebody else. It's been back and forth. Shout out to Eric Robinson. Um, that's my guy. He said in his Twitter space, um, along with Ev, uh, Lady Tellum on Twitter, that he believes we're going to get somebody else on offense. Um my space cut out before he could say why, but I'm gonna hit him up see if he can come over here and shed um, shed us some light on that situation. Um, I'm assuming we're gonna get another defensive pick, um, not pick, but a defensive player on the squad. But y'all put in the comments below if you th- think we're gonna pick up someone or if we're just making room for maybe next year, if not in the next couple uh, coming weeks. So that was a surprise. Um, other than that, don't have anything to positive or negative to say about defense. They held uh, the um, commanders, whatever they're calling themselves, 24 points. And that's that. Van Jefferson. 
All right. So if y'all don't know, we acquired Van Jefferson from the Rams. From the Rams. Well, he made his debut. And in the first quarter, um, Ritter chucked, chunked the ball down the field to him. He was pretty much wide open. And he didn't catch the ball. Now, it was an overthrown ball. But also, was it a miscommunication between the quarterback and the uh, and Van Jefferson? Was Van Jefferson running the right route? Did he have his head turned around in time? Not sure. Um, or was it just a typical Ritter just overthrew the damn ball? And so Van was unable to catch it. Not sure. But in that situation, and I might talk about this a little later. Hopefully, I remember to talk about this. I don't know why van was out there and not a playmaker arthur smith keeps putting these non playmakers in these positions like i don't know why drake london or kyle pitts wasn't out that deep to go get the ball why was it van jefferson also van jefferson just got here do does rit have ritter and Van even had that much time to even work together, you know, and do like and get their rhythm going. Personally, I don't think so. So I don't know why Arthur Smith personally chose that play. Like, and then him to be that guy out down there when I should have been a playmaker. Hell, even John o. Smith should have been down there. So that was weird to me. That was weird to me. And if he had caught that ball, that would have been a guaranteed touchdown. But he didn't. Um, you know, like I said, whether it's miscommunication or the right route wasn't done or overthrow, that's a missed touchdown opportunity that a playmaker should have been in that position instead. I know Arthur Smith likes to drop these cute plays to throw people off. But come on, man. We're trying to win games. We need the playmakers right there where they fucking need to be you know, making the big plays. That's what they're there for. You know what I'm saying? So, speaking of playmakers, Kyle Pitts. So, I know I've said it before. I'll say it again. People are like, oh, he's just jogging to his plays. But even the reporters three games ago, I believe, was like, oh, he's clearly injured. Like, he pulled something. So, pretty sure he's injured, and they don't want to tell us. Um, there, He's caught the ball. On more than more than one occasion, and he's not running with power that he used to. Remember, he would catch the ball, he'd run with power. Now it seems to be kind of a little slow. Um, but he's getting yards, just not as many yards as he could be getting. So I hope he's okay. Um, and that his injury heals and he can get back to you know, just digging in the dirt and running. I don't know if y'all have noticed that. If y'all have or haven't, put it down in the comments and just watch him the next time he catches the ball and see how he used to run hard and have long strides, and there seem to be shorter uh, shorter strides. So y'all check that out next time, and, you know, you see, or if you have noticed it, just let me know. Put it in the comments below, please. And don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, share it with your friends, your mom, dad, bald-headed granny, aunt, auntie, uncle, whoever you want to share it with. All right? So... Oh, God. Our run game. The run game is gone. You know how in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, where Johnny Depp was like, why is the rum gone? Why is our run game gone? Like, no, be fucking for real. Why is our run game gone? Why is it non-existent? Why, like, the offensive line, create the holes for our run game. Arthur Smith. Call other plays. Like, you keep trying to force the ball up the middle, and it ain't happening. It ain't happening, Captain. They're stopping our run game left and right. Like, all your run plays, were those all shown in the first two games that we had? So now defenses are picking up and reading off of it? We can't go anywhere. We can't fucking move the ball down the field anywhere. It was probably three plays that a hole opened up for Tyler Algier, I think, two times, and Bijan one time. Other than that, 
nothing. Like they're being stopped. Like we spent all this money on who is going to be one of the greatest running backs of all time, a generational talent. Breeze hates the word generational and call people generational. Generational talent like Bajan. Let's not waste his years because this man should be getting way more, way more yards than he is. Bajan only had 31 yards for 10 carries. 31. Nope. Hold on. I'm sick, y'all. Read the wrong stats. I'm sick. Excuse me. <clears throat> take after this, take my medicine. I'm going to bed. But John only had 37 yards for 13 carries. 37 yards for 13 carries. This man should be having 100 yards a game. 100 yards a game. He should be having 100 fucking yards a game. He only had 37 yards for 13 carries. Average 2.8. 2.8 yards. One of the most, who's going to be a legend, <clears throat> a legendary running back, should not have only 37 yards. Tyler Algier only had 51 yards for 13 carries. Come on, y'all. Come on. Like, that That doesn't even make any sense. Arthur Smith needs to fucking do something. Someone else needs to give him plays and be like, just call this play. Just call this play. The offensive line, I need them to block. I need y'all to work on opening up holes for these players. Like, I don't know what y'all got to do. Do some fucking bench presses, get in the gym, get your weight up, step it up. But between Arthur Smith and the offensive line, y'all got to do better. Like, this makes no sense for our running backs to have this many, this few yards. Like, step it up. And how Desmond got 18. How Desmond almost got... Um, as many rushing yards as the running backs. Exactly. It don't make no fucking sense. Fix the run game. I don't know what, I don't know what Arthur Smith has to do, but he needs to fucking fix it. And one thing for certain, two things for sure. He needs to fix the run game. There's no reason we should have this running back tandem and have less than 100 yards between the two running backs combined. I mean, damn, what the fuck? All right, this two point, two point call. Look, Arthur Smith, shut up. Arthur Smith needs he needs his play calling duties taken away from him. He needs them taken away from him because during this two point, they're trying to get these extra two points. Go for the points. Have Coop kicked field goal. Let's call it a day. No, you not only. I understand trying to play catch up you know, from behind, right? I get that shit. However, you want to go for two points. We've done it before. We've done it in the past, right? Okay, cool. All game, our run game has been stifled. We just talked about that, how our run game has been stifled. Did I say the right word? Child, whatever. Um, Our run game has been stopped. Why? With a two-point call, be trying to run Tyler Algier into the end zone. If I'm not mistaken, he was trying to run him up the middle, which hasn't worked the whole game. So why would that be the call? Why wouldn't we try to just pass the ball into the end zone for the two points? Better yet, why wouldn't we just have Koo kick it for one point and then try to come back. Arthur Smith. You need to make better decisions. No. Fuck that. You need to fucking just. You you just don't need to be a goddamn coach. Uh, fucking offensive coach no more. Like I don't understand what is going on. I don't know if y'all have heard this rumor. This is just off the dome. That they think Arthur Smith is wants to tank so he could get like a veteran quarterback like he did with the Titans and then he got Ryan Fitzpatrick and then all of a sudden the Titans were good. Have y'all heard that? What are y'all thinking about that? Put that in your in the comments below. Yeah, uh what y'all think about that. 
All right. So now we got the the delay of game. So over there in the end zone, nothing's working. All of a sudden, we get a delay of game, right? So I'm like, how the fuck did he do that? Do y'all think that they did the delay of game on purpose because we couldn't um, convert anything that close? That's what I'm thinking might have happened. But it could have been Ritter also not paying attention because the next play... That it was also a delay of game. They didn't call it, but that was a delay of game. Where I was sitting, you could see the clock. The clock hit zero. Then Ritter snapped the ball. So that should have been a delay of game call. He snapped the ball, and then, of course, through, through the interception. I left. Almost everybody left because we're like, we ain't winning now. You know what I'm saying? Like, at no point during the game I thought that we might be able to come back out of time, but once Ritter threw that interception I was like there's no way of us coming back so most everybody bounced after that like everybody had hope for a comeback and thought there could be a possibility for a comeback but at that moment at that moment in time no that's when you for sure knew. For sure knew. Now, the moment I thought, hey, we probably lose this shit, is right here. When special teams let that man almost get a touchdown. Let the other special teams piss me off. I was like, oh, we better lose this shit. Okay, let's buckle up in for the ride. We're going to lose because special teams brought to the ball. That man almost ran right to the end zone. I was like, nobody stopped him. I don't even think the punter knew what to do. What's the punter? Number 13? Who's number 13? Whoever that is. He 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 was like, I ain't attacking nobody. <laughs> Pretty much. Like that kind of little attitude. So yeah, man. This is when I was like, mm, we probably gonna lose. We could come back. We could afford to come back. Cause we've been we've done it before, but I was like, yeah, we probably gonna lose. Oh shit, my laptop. Yeah. All right, so this game is that it? Oh, this game was very disappointing. Overall, this was disappointing. I need I need us as a whole to have consistency because there is no reason there's no reason on God's green earth why we had 400 yards on offense in lost game 402 yards on offense in lost game Y'all hear me? 402 yards and lost this game on offense. The Commanders had 193 yards. We have 402 and did nothing. Nothing. Like, that don't make sense. Like, look at this. Ritter had another 300 yard game 307 yards two touchdowns three interceptions he had another 300 yard game but this time took an L like that shit makes no sense y'all like something's got to Ritter needs to be the word for Ritter is Consistency. Consistency. Really. The last game in Houston, that's a Ritter that we all expected to come out. The way Smith and them have been hyping you up, the way they're like, oh, we're going to sit you out in preseason because that's the guy. 
the game against Houston, that is who we expected to come out every game. Every single game. You have, okay, you had a 300 yard game. Good for you, but you also had poor decision making again. <laughs> you you had three three fucking interceptions. You st- I saw you stare down your, your targets again. You've got to stop doing that. Like, was he doing that in college? I need to look up his um sheet. Because bruh, stop staring down who you have to turn. Make better decisions. If both delay of games were just you in on the sidelines. Um, if I'm a, someone said that we was like, I didn't know what to do with the play. Like when the interception happened, how do you not know what to do? Arthur Smith, how does he not know what to do? That's right. That's the starter. This is who you're going with. This is the man. And that's what he fucking does. Get the fuck out of here. Like, no, nah, for real. Get the fuck out of, get out of our faces with that bullshit. Like, it's bullshit. Offensive line needs to be better. It's like Ritter can only be great like Frosted Flakes if everything goes his way. And where we, Why is he not prepared for a fucking red zone play? I'm confused. Like, y'all got to do better. But our offense got to do better. Arthur Smith's play con, he's got to... He's got to go. He's not the worst, but God damn, he be doing too much cutesy ass fuck. Don't fucking work. And he needs to cut that shit out. Like, damn. Say the trick plays if we up, if we up goddamn 20 points. And then you want to do a cute trick play to see if the shit works. And and do it like that. Speaking of people that didn't cut it out. I ain't that everything I was gonna say anything bad about Jean. Look now, there's one thing where you could have had the ball. You try using one hand to catch the ball. My guy, both hands. This ain't Sports Center top ten. Yes, okay. You had some great plays that everyone has loved. And cherished over and been like, you're amazing. My guy. My guy. Use two hands to catch the ball. Okay. Use two hands to catch the ball. And my boy Aaron Freeman, shout out Aaron Freeman. Uh, he said he saw you jogging sometimes. Bruh. We need you, we need you to move. Stop jogging. All right, stop jogging to the line. Get to your route. Don't dog your route. Work your routes, okay? And you still have to catch the ball. You don't have to have a cool play. Everything. He wants you to win. We want the team to win. Use both hands to catch the fucking ball. Thank you. Yeah, there's a Desmond Ritter DoorDash commercial. My guy, keep this shit up. You're going to be working for DoorDash. You're going to be delivering food and groceries and whatever else on DoorDash if you keep this bullshit. Dan. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to completely have it because I know it's I know it's just not rare. I know it's a combination of the offense from Arthur Smith to the O line to um you know players not catching the ball, et cetera, et cetera. All right. And then with some positive news. We just move this. Greg London finally, 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 finally is being used. So that's great. That's great. That is wonderful news. He had, I think, over 100. He had 25 receiving yards for the day. So that's great. Like Frosted Flakes. Also had one, two, three. Let me see. One, two, three. 
eight players get the ball. Um, receive who received the ball. So that, that's what's up as far as offense goes. But that's it. I just need them to do better. I'm tired of, you know, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I got to do better on offense. My like next week, we need to. Of course, we want to win games. We're going to rebuild, clearly. And rebuild, but it's still frustrating. So, y'all need to do better. Okay? Y'all have got to do better. Much better. I'm tired. We're tired. And tired. But it's always rise up. Y'all already know what it is. Um, that was a video because I'm sick and I'm coming at you guys with a video to eat and take some medicine in bed. Uh, but I was like, I'm gonna get this video out just for y'all. So, like the video, thank you. Make sure you follow KTSE Ave. I'm sure I'll talk about it on Saturday night, as usually when they go live uh, for their podcast recordings. So, make sure y'all check them out. Shout out to Aaron Freeman, shout out to Smitty Country. Um, if I'm missing people, please, it's my brain firing over here. Um, everybody, uh, Burl, everybody, appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Um, come with me, it's going to be a surprise. I'm going to try to do a lot of resting this weekend um, because I have to recover, um, fully recover. And we will be back. Oh, yeah. KTSE have the most I talk about more Falcon shit on uh, their show. Uh, Breeze, of course, the host here. And, of course, he's, you know, has sniffles. So make sure y'all tune in and to subscribe. And, of course, tell DB Narsen to you. Um, thank you all so much. I'm out.